Welcome to The Honest Channel, I'm Claire Johnston, a journalist on a mission to learn how to age well, look and feel good for longer and share this with you. And one of the quickest ways to look and feel good is to wear flattering clothing in the right styles and colours that are going to help us look our best. And when it comes to helping women find outfits that not only suit their shape, but shift their shape, personal stylist Melissa Morrell is one of the best out there as you're about to see. She shares her expertise on her YouTube channel which has had over 15 million views and climbing and through her online styling courses and consultations. And if you're retired or a stay-at-home parent or you work from home you may feel as I did that you've got yourself in a bit of a style rut where you're dressing for comfort and convenience and it just chips away at our confidence day by day. So now we're going to get our very own free consultation with Melissa as she reveals the styling secrets to flattering our individual body shapes at any age and getting our mojo back. Melissa, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Well, you know, this is a really interesting one. As you can probably tell by my outfit, I should have completely rethought that. But lovely. <laughs> I like those colours on you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you've been a, a personal stylist for over 20 years now. Is that right? Show my age. I know. Yes. Uh, well, I've been in journalism for nearly 30 years. So, I mean... Okay. Right there with you. And I know that through your YouTube channel and your website that you've helped probably millions of women look and feel better about themselves. So I'm also focused on helping people look and feel their best as we age. But what do you think are some of the most common misconceptions around style in, in mid and later life that kind of hold us back? Do you think people can get themselves into a bit of a style rut as they age? Yes. Definitely, definitely a style rut. Um, but in terms of the myths that black is good for them. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, I'm covering the arms. Yeah, that black is the best colour and it's not when you get to our age at all. Um, unless you unless you wear a full face of makeup, mm -hmm. then you can you can carry the black off. But generally speaking, uh, black is very ageing and draining. The other myth is that black goes with every other colour. It doesn't. And so it makes it very, very hard to create a capsule wardrobe when you've got a lot of black in it. That they can't wear neutrals. They can't wear sort of the creams and the beiges and things like that where everybody can wear it. It just depends where on your body frame you put it, how close you put it to your face. Like even just the blouse right now, if I did that up, for example, it might drain me a little bit. But with it open and my jewellery separating it, then that's, you know, changes the whole look and feel, basically. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of people, it, it, they do get into a style rut, but also their bodies are changing. And they don't know how to dress themselves confidently because they've got extra lumps and bumps, you know, menopausal stomachs, the sort of thickening around the bra strap, all of that. And so you've got a lot of women of our age lacking confidence anyway because of all of the brain fog and everything else we know that's associated, but also the weight gain, then they don't want to buy clothes until they've lost some weight, but they can't lose weight because of all of the lifestyle factors happening at the same time. And then they get into quite a, a negative rut and cycle with clothes, whereby they just throw on anything. Um, and I think that's a real shame because there's a lot of life left in us at this age. Yeah. And I can imagine, you know, with changing body shape, um, you always hear of people going, right, well, you know, rather than throwing out the, the stuff that doesn't fit them anymore, they kind of keep that in the wardrobe and they buy some cheap stuff to do them for now, thinking they're going to get back to that. Um, and so in some cases they will, you know, that's that's motivation. Um, but, you know, our body shape can change as we age. I mean, what do you advise around that? Do you, do you sort of go embrace the moment and shop for now? <laughs> if I can pick upon the point about trying to be motivated by the smaller pair of jeans that are in your wardrobe, mm -hmm. I actually think that's really, really damaging because mm -hmm. every morning when you open your wardrobe and you can't wear 
50 60 percent of it because it's in the wrong size because it's holy because it's old because it's dated it puts you on a real downer to start the day you know you put somebody slapping you in the face every morning saying you weren't where you used to be you haven't got the clothes ready to wear that so the first thing that I would advocate is to clear that wardrobe out of anything that you can't wear and that's not only because you can't fit in it but because it doesn't suit your lifestyle anymore Um, Many of us have moved to a more casual lifestyle now, yet if we perhaps, you know, pre-COVID and we're working in the city or whatever, we've got a whole wardrobe full of things that just aren't relevant. And so that reduces the portion down of what we can actually choose from in the morning as well. So um, you can see kind of quite a nice style of clothes Mm. behind me at the moment. And that's literally because I've just filmed a how to build a capsule wardrobe video um, for my channel. And the whole premise of that is don't listen to these influencers who tell you, you need a black pair of trousers, you need a white shirt, you need this. You don't need any of that if it's not relevant to your lifestyle. Mm. It's almost picking up on um, following people on Instagram, thinking, oh, I've got to have that, I've got to have this, where if you're in the house all day, or if you're a retired lady that barely goes out, then 95% of your wardrobe should reflect that lifestyle, not the fantasy lifestyle where you're still in heels and a nice dress. Um, And often we, you know, we look nicer when we're dressed up, don't we? We feel nicer, we put on more makeup, we stand differently, we've got heels on, we feel taller maybe. But for most of us, we're in pretty much casual clothes all the time. You know, if I wasn't talking to you right now, I'd have on a tracksuit. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) I can't imagine you in a tracksuit, Melissa, but I know it'll be stylish. It'll be a stylish tracksuit. Well, elevated casual, I like to put it, but I I don't think you'd call it stylish if you saw me at 10 o'clock at night just slobbing around on the sofa. (laughs) No, I am interested in this idea of the capsule wardrobe because I'm sure a lot of people are like me. I mean, I am a hoarder. I've got stuff from the 90s that I'm waiting for for it to come around. You know, I'm still waiting. It's been some time. But I'm thinking, oh, no, you know, those jeans, they're going to come back. Um, Is your recommendation then that, okay, the stuff we don't fit, you say goes, yeah. which is difficult because we're still holding on to that time that we could fit it. But okay, I'm, we're going with that rule. If we haven't worn it in a year, yeah. is it does it automatically go out? Even a, even a season, to be honest with you, wow. you know, just be split between summer and winter, obviously. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't have to go out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not an advocate of being wasteful with clothes at all, which is the whole, again, the premise behind the capsule wardrobe is that 90% of that should be basic foundation pieces. So these are pieces that don't date. So a shirt like this, for example, is not going to date. Mm. But if it had lace embellishments on or pearls on or just something a little bit different, then it might date a little bit quicker. So the majority of your wardrobe are your blue jeans, your white T-shirts, your plain things. So each season, you'll find that you don't have to throw them out if you've bought um, correct foundation pieces to begin with, you know, yeah. i.e. That, that won't date in the first place. But if we are looking at throwing things out, then, you know, that comes into two or three different categories. It's definitely charity shop, never just throw out. Then... Everyone needs what I call a gardening drawer, dog walking drawer or Mm -hmm. whatever it is. You know, those scruffy clothes that still got life in them, but you hope that nobody comes to your door whilst you're wearing them. If you do feel that you want to keep the taffeta bridesmaid dress for sentimental reasons. You never know. You never know. You never know. It might come back round again. Vacuum pack them, put them upstairs in your loft, find somewhere else. But where it's confusing is when it's in the everyday wardrobe Mm. you know this whole phrase where you know I've been guilty of it myself I've got lots to wear but lots in my wardrobe but nothing to wear as such Mm -hmm. it's because if a lot of people analyze their wardrobe they've only got a very small portion that actually fits and suits them so start by getting rid of everything that doesn't and build from there and I think you'll find getting dressed every morning is a lot easier and a lot simpler Okay, that totally applies to me. So I've taken all that in. Thank you. Um, I'm going to have wardrobe restyle for you. <laughs> absolutely. I'm going to have to take a lot out of there, I can tell you. Do you think that we need to 
alter how we dress as we get older in that do you think certain rules should apply as we age as to how we dress or do you think we should be able to dress exactly as we choose just whatever we feel like okay um yes I think you should be in summary yes I think you should be able to dress exactly how you want to that makes you feel confident in your lifestyle is probably a a summary of that um what I don't agree with is that somebody is wearing really dated clothes and they're wearing them because they don't have the knowledge obviously budget is a different thing but if they don't have the knowledge of what to choose or how to update that look slightly then I think for that person that there's loads of help out there and people invest in you know all myriads of other things but they tend not to invest in themselves I see a lot of women who have now got a very casual wardrobe but they're wearing their husband's joggers and their husband's old t-shirt to walk around the house in So invest in those pieces if that's what you're wearing. Mm -hmm. Why do you invest a stupid amount on a wedding guest outfit to look your best for one day of the year, but you won't invest in what you're wearing every single day? Mm -hmm. So yes, I think they should wear what they like, but yes, I think they should really be able to self-assess and make sure that they're wearing what's what they like, what's confident, what makes them feel confident and what's right for their lifestyle. And I mean, there's so many, you know, fabulously dressed um, celebrities now who are in uh, mid to later life, lots of wonderful role models. I wonder when you look at, say, somebody like Madonna, who is really pushing boundaries with what she wears, you know, so we're talking, uh, I'm thinking swimsuit, but you know, it's like a costume suit. (laughs) I don't know, what would you call that? Uh, A body suit, not a lot covering the bottom at the back. What's your view on that? Well, Madonna can probably do what the hell she likes, quite frankly. But um, would it suit Mary Jones up the road in my village? Probably not. Well, I think Mary Jones might have something to say about that. But, you know. <laughs> you know what? If if Mary Jones has the confidence to go out and the personality to wear that, then why not? Yeah. I think... Being realistic about it for my audience, the people that come to me, um, to our Style Academy to get help, they they aren't fashionistas in the first place. Mm -hmm. They aren't people that have got this, um, you know, huge personality that can carry off the Carrie Bradshaw type of look. Yeah. Everyday women who are wearing a pair of jeans and a jumper and they just want to look nice in it. Yeah. Really. Yeah. So I think for that person, you know, dress for your confidence, dress for your body shape and dress for your lifestyle. Don't dress to look wacky because you think somebody else is doing it in the public eye. Do you know, I feel similarly. um, But what what I often think about Madonna um, and one of the reasons I actually like her is that she pushes boundaries on all fronts. So, you know, whether it's the facial procedure she has or whatever, She is pushing boundaries and it moves them for the rest of us. It gives the rest of us a little bit more wiggle room so that there's not this sort of expectation. And I quite like that. I mean, when I think back to my mum when she was 50, that's my age, you know, I mean, I think she dresses more youthfully now. It was just in recent years that she started getting into jeans and uh, just that dressing a little more youthfully. And I love that we have the opportunity to do that now. You know, I don't really think I've changed the way I dress that much over the years. And that suits me. Um, and it's it's nice to be able to kind of have those boundaries pushed. It always filters down. Mm. Whatever the likes of Victoria Beckham, Madonna, any of those, it filters down. And so we might present something to a client that isn't everywhere in the shops, but we know is going to be somewhere in the Mm. shops. That client needs to be quite fashion forward in their thinking. They need to be open to new things and not just following the rest of the crowd of what they're seeing in Marks and Spencers, for example. That notion, that concept doesn't really resonate with the majority of my clients, the majority of the everyday women out there. 
They just want to look nice in the moment, feel confident. And I think more importantly, flatter their body shapes. Yeah. Because it's their body shape that is driving their choices at the moment. And as soon as I can show them that I can get them back into that hourglass shape, regardless of the size of their boobs, how big or small their belly is, flat their bottom is, if I use the hourglass balancing method, which is our uh, method of styling, when they when they see how we can get them into that, that then gives them the freedom to start dressing a little bit more aspirational rather than that, what they think they should be dressing like. You know, it bridges that gap between, oh, I can see what Madonna's doing and now I'm down here, but now I've been shown how to do it a little bit more. I'm somewhere in the middle and I'm quite happy and confident with that. You talked about dressing uh, for body shapes there and I'd love to run through some scenarios with you. Um, one point though, before we do, I, I'm because I'm just sitting here thinking, right, right now I'm sitting here in a really worn pair of Uggs that would horrify you. Um, no, love, love a worn pair of Uggs. <laughs> And, you know, it's winter and I do find myself just, you know, throwing on anything in the morning. And I wonder if the psychology should more be we try to dress for ourselves um, to impress ourselves every day at home. Do you think that's important? I think making yourself feel nice in the morning and even if you're working from home all day, you know, if it makes you feel nice to put a bit of lipstick on, then put a bit of lipstick on, but do that for yourself. It's the same with clothes. I think it goes back to my point earlier on, though. It's when you haven't focused on the right pieces in your wardrobe for your lifestyle to begin with, your choice is very limited and therefore we just grab anything. But if you were to switch that round and go, well, okay, I'm going to invest in the clothes I wear all the time. So I'm going to put some nice casual pieces in. When you get up in the morning, you've only got nicer pieces to choose from. Am I able to get up? And I can... Oh, yes, please. I mean, I'm, I'm salivating over what's there in the background. Well, it's the, the type of thing that I teach people just as an example right now. Well, let's, let's just even look at these three items here. Mm -hmm. So right now, I've got a pair of green, quite smart trousers on with a smart... Nice. A, a smart shirt. Yeah, you look beautiful. If I, thank you. If I was just to change that up and just put yes. a jumper on, yeah, really nice. Equally as um, sort of looks nice and pre presents nicely, but more cosy, more mm -hmm. for just pop into a friend's house or a work meeting or something on those lines. But equally, when I get in later on, I just want to change my jumper up for something a lot more, um, a lot more casual looking. I might put the matching pants on, for example. Mm -hmm. The reason I've been able to make those swaps, I can see a white T-shirt on there as well. If you had your white T-shirt, your shirt, this and that, I've been able to elevate my outfit really easily because all of the items are in the same colorways. Okay. Right. They're okay. Slightly different fabrics, different thicknesses. I've got different necklines up there, you know, a tur turtleneck in a cashmere jumper, for example. And as long as you stick to similar colorways, then you're going to be able to elevate and um, bring it back down to casual. Mm -hmm. Us, I want a better phrase. <laughs> really, really easy. Where people go wrong is that they've got the shirt in navy, the jumper in cream, the hoodie in a blue and white spot. And suddenly, in order to go up or down, they've got to change their trousers and their shoes and everything else. My advice would be just to stick to three or four colorways in your wardrobe. That way, everything mixes and matches perfectly. You get all your foundation pieces in those three or four colorways. Once they're all in place, you can start to insert a little bit of extra color and a bit more personality. But don't do that until all the basics are in place first. So shall we run through some of those body shapes now? Um, so for people watching who might have different problem areas, uh, I think probably a lot of people will have in common the stomach fat, you know, particularly that seems yeah, to get worse with these popular videos, how to disguise a larger stomach. Let me give you the classic shape of um, like we often refer to it as an apple shaped lady um, where she's got a larger, thicker stomach. Mm -hmm. uh, and that might be protruding outwards, but also there's a thickness around it as well. Often the weight goes around the back. 
but then their legs remain really very slim and then they've got a flat bottom. Probably one of the most um, common figures that we see as we start to go through the menopause and as weight sits around there and they lose it off their legs. And what that lady will tend to do to disguise her stomach is that she will focus on her legs. Okay, so she might put her tight, skinny trousers on her legs because that's her thinnest part. So then what she does is she puts a big baggy jumper over the top to cover perhaps the larger bust and the stomach. And then all you see is these little legs sticking out there. But what have you done there? All you have done is exaggerated. You've made yourself very brick like all on top. You've given yourself the Mr. Strong or SpongeBob square pants. <laughs> Anyway, SpongeBob SquarePants. Yeah. I love SpongeBob, but yeah, yeah, it's not it's not the best look. Yeah. You that, and you've highlighted these teeny tiny legs. So mm. you've put, you've exaggerated the very area that you are trying to hide because the proportion difference is now even greater than it was before. Does that make sense? Uh, I, yes, and I can see it. You know, even when I started styling um, years ago, that's what I was taught to do as a stylist. It yeah. was highlight their good bits, disguise their bad bits. But as I started obviously getting more confident with my style and seeing all the thousands of women that I've had, I realized that that just wasn't working. What is better is if, if we put everybody back into an hourglass shape. So how we do that on somebody who has got a larger stomach is if that's your largest area, so this is your stomach area here, the only way to make that stomach area look smaller is to broaden the shoulders and broaden the hips because then the stomach in the middle is the smallest part of you rather than the widest part of you. Wow. As soon as you start using the terms broadening for yeah. a lady who is already feeling broader on top, then that's a really scary thing. Mm -hmm. So I quickly realized you can't tell people that. You have to show them that, which is what YouTube has been great for doing because I dress the women live on my channel and they can actually see the difference. But when you do go like that, for example, with a lady that's got big bust, that bust is going to look smaller. Mm -hmm. Okay, because look, yeah. we've gone bigger. So suddenly that's going to look smaller. So we broaden there. All of this is going to look smaller. And then we kick out at their hips as well. And that will disguise the stomach. So that's the first thing you would do. Mm -hmm. Second thing, if the, um, the season allows for it, then layering is fantastic. And you only have to buy a good blazer, for example, and that will reshape you anyway. That blazer has got to come in at the waist and kick out quite significantly in order to reshape that stomach area. Okay. But if a, if a lady's lifestyle doesn't warrant a blazer, what do you do? Then it might be perhaps a long line cardigan where you're only seeing this small bit here. Mm -hmm. So there are various techniques and you always put a lady back into her, her hourglass shape. Then you use the clothes to add layering and disguise very obvious bits. Okay. I was going to ask about the bigger chest, not something, I'm obviously not asking for myself. Um, so even on that, I spend my life in padded bras. And the reason yeah. I do that is because I'm larger on my hips. Okay? Right, okay. If I suddenly, if I looked really flat chested there, it's going to make my hips look bigger. So I broaden here to give me some shape back. Because if I'm yeah. flat there and I don't have anything on my shoulders, what's going to stick out? So even on myself, I am making myself look at little tucks in my in my blouse there. Yeah. Is broadening my shoulders to, to marry up with my hips. Clever. Well, you look super trim to me, but um, yeah, very, very balanced shape there. Following my, following my own rules. <laughs> but yes, the lady with the larger bust, you need to go for a V-neck or a low round neck. You need to make sure that things don't hang off 
your bus line. Mm -hmm. So often they will, um, you know, it will sort of merge in like that with the stomach because their bust is really big. So what that lady is better doing is following her bust line around because I guarantee this bit will be smaller than her bust. Mm -hmm. When she follows it like that, you can see the differentiation between her bust and her stomach. It doesn't all merge into one. Do you be recommending that they... um broaden the shoulders for the larger chest as well. Yes, yeah. Do you know, broadening the shoulders works on every single body shape apart from a true swimmer's body. Mm. Um, but we, so we've got Style Academy and we run on, run a lot of courses and we only use real life um, women, real everyday women for that. And we must have seen probably 300, 400 um models or real life women who said they are broad on top and could be our model for being broad on top not one of them made it i rarely ever ever see a true swimmer we'll have people and they'll say yeah no i am definitely and when i turn them around they're broad here on their back oh there. yes uh-huh where they're broad your shoulder bone starts here Okay, they need to be broad. Well, that person, if they are genuinely broad there, wouldn't wear any sort of shoulder embellishments or shoulder pads. Mm. But apart from that, every other every other shape could do with that. But even that, you need to be practical with your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. You don't want to go around in the summer with a big hot shoulder pad flapped over your shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> so that's where a collar will broaden you. You know, mm -hmm. that is broadening. Mm -hmm. Those little tucks are broadening. Um, it might be a different contrast in fabric across the shoulder bit. It will be the stitching that is on your shoulder and not on your drop sleeve. It, you know, a drop sleeve there is um, can make somebody look very rounded. And that's the other thing. If you've got a large bust or you are more rounded all over in your body shape, you need to create angles. So a, sh a strong angle out there will make your bust look smaller and your tummy look smaller. Excellent. Okay, I'm learning. Um, For the trade. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I want to come down there and just own that little capsule wardrobe behind you. But, you know, I'll, I'll check out the videos and see if I can pull one together for myself. Um, how about short legs? That's another that's another big problem, isn't it? If, if uh, And especially if you feel like you've got the kind of longer body and then... Short legs with it, yeah. That's a quite an easy one, to be mm -hmm. honest with you. Um, and that is just reproportioning you. So let's say you have got a longer body, then wearing so a high waist like that yeah. is going to change the proportion here. So it's going to make my legs look a lot longer. If I pull my chair away, I can probably just, don't know how much you'll be able to get there. Yeah. But I only have to give myself a lower waistband there yes. and my body has gone longer can you see the proportion difference yes i can and now yeah. i've lengthened my legs okay a higher waist the myth with a shorter leg is that they believe they can't wear a cropped jean or a crop trouser yeah you can wear a crop trouser and it's actually very um, flattering on most ladies because you're seeing what is often the thinnest part of the body, the ankles, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. maybe the wrists when you show the wrists as well. Um, but only if you're pairing that then with the right shoe. Mm -hmm. So, for example, I've got a little shoe here. So if this was somebody's foot there, and if I didn't have that watch on there and they had a cropped, Cropped, um, a crop jean on, you see the, e the the foot there and the pointed shoe and everything is elongated. Mm -hmm. as, soon as you put on a trainer like, like that, mm -hmm. you've got no you've got no gap then between the crop of your jean because the tongue is really high. That's going to make you look shorter. Mm -hmm. There are combinations of things you have to do in order to elongate the fray, elongate the legs when you do have shorter, but it always has to be in combination. So if you do this, you've got to do this. If you do this, you've got to do that. And remember about tucking in as well, because as if you, you know, if I pulled that out now, 
then my legs are going to look shorter. Yeah. Yeah. If I tuck it in now, my legs are going to look longer. Yeah, yeah. What a difference. It's as simple as that sometimes as well. And if we do go cropped on a lady who has got shorter legs, then what we lose from the bottom of the crop gene to give us the style, maybe an inch, then we gain it back by just tucking in at the front. And, and when I think about getting dressed, I just kind of go for overall, do I think the overall aesthetic's good rather than actually the detail? That is really good, actually. Mm -hmm. um, that, it, that's a really good way of looking at it because too often people will just get a top and say, oh, well, I really like the top, so I didn't think about the trousers. Mm -hmm. Or approach of making sure that from head to toe, it all works is a brilliant one. It's exactly what you should be doing. Okay. Yeah, you're on the right lines. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, now, the last... Uh, body shape problem I wanted to ask about it's quite a, tr a tricky one is the bingo wings okay so I mean lots of people will just really cover themselves up whether they want to or not especially in summer uh, what do you suggest for for bingo wings those kind of the, the, the sagging under the arms no yes yeah um, my shirt even today is feeling a little bit well I'm thinking I'm just suddenly wonder sometimes I say things and I think well viewers in the US do they say bingo wings over there but hopefully they'll know what we mean they do say bingo wings actually <laughs> yeah chicken, yeah chicken driblets um yeah the baggy skin do you know the there are a certain a uh, cut of top on the sleeve that actually covers that the bingo wings really well. And a shop that does it every single year is phase eight. Phase so eight. Phase eight, yeah. They really do seem to cater for that perfect length. And, and what they often do is it's, a, it's on an angle. It starts about here, but then it comes down to about the... Um, the elbow area. Oh. So it looks like it's starting higher up. And so you are still getting the elongation in the arm, but it's actually covering the bingo things. Is it sort of ruched, a little bit ruched? And then so you've got one side that's higher than the other that's falling down. It can be ruched. And the problem I find with the ruching ones is then they become quite tight. If you've got mm -hmm. a larger arm, you want to have width around it okay. because then your arm itself is going to look smaller. Mm -hmm. the, wor the worst thing you can do is have a tight sleeve on a larger arm. And the same if you've got thick ankles. You don't want a tight jean around a thick ankle. You want to make it look like your ankle is the small bit and the jean is wider. Sheer fabrics over the arm in the summer. My mum is somebody who suffers with this really badly and, and it really affects her dressing or her ability to dress as she wishes in the summer. Um, but yeah, fa people like Phase 8, Marks and Spencers as well, they do some good ones where you just look for sheer fabrics on, the, on their, that area. Perfect. Um, well, last question now. Thank you for that. Um, what do you think it means uh, to look your best as you age so what does that mean for you that balance between trying to sort of look and feel energized and not beating ourselves up for for aging so you know what what does that balance look like for you what are you hoping to achieve as you age pretty okay with aging as such it doesn't I've never had any I, I'm not big on makeup or hair or anything like that our um our makeup artist, Hannah, has only just in the last six months got me to um, wash my face at night. That's awful. I sound so scary. But, I, I know. Mm -hmm. but for me, it's not the most important thing. For me, I do look, like to look nice. And I like to look nice even when I'm casual. Yeah. So elevated casual wardrobe is how I... Um, how I'm comfortable in presenting myself. No, absolutely. And um, it has just occurred to me as you were talking there, you know, that I think I've probably put a lot of focus, uh, especially this year, on my skin and also my health and fitness and and getting that kind of, trying to get that biologically right, if you yes. like, yes. and neglected the wardrobe. 
And you have just really made me rethink that because I can feel it just getting kind of dowdier and dowdier. And I'm sitting here, I'm feeling all dowdy and I'm like, okay, this was a little message today just to step it up a little bit and well, you, 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 obviously your face looks absolutely amazing. So you're investing time here. And well, my face is matching my top. It's just ruby red with the hormones. So <laughs> that's nice, though. I, I like that natural glow that it gives. Us. Oh, I've got, a, I've got a natural glow. You mentioned um, fitness and and health. Actually, that is one thing that I'm very focused on as well. Um, I've done the Zoe app. I, I do Pilates five or six times a week. So, um, and I don't drink any, I've never been able to drink alcohol. I'm just in, completely intolerant to it. So, and I'm a very clean eater. So I think all of those things mean that now I am at the stage where um, I'm getting older a lot quicker. I feel like um, I'm best placed because of my lifestyle um, to not feel like I have to do anything drastic just yet. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you look in great shape um, and, and you wear your lifestyle. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Melissa. I've enjoyed every minute you've given me and I'm sure everybody watching a lot to think about. And um, I'm going to go and, and root through my wardrobe now and see what I can pull out, what I can bear to prize out of there. Give us a call if you need us. We can do that online for you and, and help oh, you do that. We'd love to do that for you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. No problem. Thank you very much. I've got to be honest and say that before I talked to Melissa, I didn't realize how much I personally needed a consultation like that. And one of my biggest takeaways was that I had a wardrobe full of clothes I hardly wore and no longer loved, but I was just wearing them on autopilot. And I also had so many old clothes in there that it was hard to find the items that I actually still wanted to wear. So I worked my way through my wardrobe and drawers and I ruthlessly pulled out everything I no longer enjoyed wearing and had had its day. And the question I asked myself before I decided to keep it or throw it out was whether that item made me feel stylish and good about myself when I wore it. And if it didn't, it either went in the trash pile or the charity pile. And there's always that option to put some of the less worn stuff that might have a better known label on eBay or something like Vinted and use the earnings to build up your capsule wardrobe. After I did my clear out, I took care to purchase just a few items that I really loved to round out my wardrobe so that even when I'm working from home, I'm wearing things that I feel good in as well as feeling comfortable. And I picked them up from Gap actually, where I haven't shopped in years, but I picked up in the online sale a pink sweater to give me a bit more color this winter and this gray denim blouse that will go with absolutely anything and a good fitting pair of versatile jeans too. And I think Gap have really stepped up their game lately actually and have some great basics in their current range that are reasonably priced so I'll link to some of the things I love in the description along with Melissa's channel so that you can check that out too. So I would love to hear your thoughts on this interview. Did it strike a chord with you or have you already got to grips with your wardrobe? Do share your tips and experience and if you haven't already then by subscribing to the channel you'll see all my new content as soon as it's published and for more advice and information around how to age well you can also visit my website honest.scott and follow me on instagram at honestclaire for now thanks for watching and i'll see you next time